Hey folks, welcome back, Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, I'm gonna take you through types of uncertainty. So we're gonna start by looking at scale reading uncertainty. We're then gonna move on and look at mean and random uncertainty, and then we'll finish by looking at something called systematic uncertainty. So let's get into it. So the first thing to point out is that all experimental measurements that you take are gonna be subject to something called uncertainty. And what this means is you're gonna have errors in your measurements, regardless of whether you want them or not. So this means that no measurement can be 100% accurate. So chances are, if you're taking a measurement of something in a lab, that it's not gonna be 100% accurate. And we're gonna see why that is. So we sometimes use the term error instead of the word uncertainty, but they mean the same thing. So let's kick off by looking at scale reading uncertainty. So the scale reading uncertainty, all this means is that it tells us how accurately a scale on a measuring instrument can be read. The reading uncertainty depends on the type of scale being used though, so it depends on whether it's something called analog or digital. So an analog scale will usually involve something like division markings or a dial, for example a ruler, a meter stick or a weighing scale that has a little dial on it. Okay, so that is examples of analog scales and we have our own uncertainty rule for analog scales and I've put it in a box, so that is this thing here. So it says that the reading uncertainty for an analog scale, like on your ruler or meter stick, is equal to plus or minus half of the smallest scale division. So if you take a ruler and you look at the scale divisions on your ruler, then it would be plus or minus half of that if you were using a ruler. Okay, so for example, here's a milliameter, so this is just an ammeter with a dial on it. So this is an analog scale. So on this analog scale, we could see the scale divisions are going up in ones because we have one, two, three, four, five, and so on, up to 10, and then up to 30. So there's the scale divisions here are just one milliamp. So that means that my scale reading uncertainty for the analog scale here would be plus or minus half of the one milliamp, which would be plus or minus 0 0.5 milliamps. Okay, so that's how you would use this one here. But if we were using a digital scale, then a digital scale involves something like a computer screen. So for example, your calculator screen will be um, a digital scale or a multimeter. So anytime you've got an ammeter or a voltmeter that's on a multimeter, um, that's going to be a digital scale. So there's a different rule if you're using a digital scale. So the reading uncertainty for a digital scale is equal to plus or minus one of the least significant digit. So what I mean by that is, and it's best to show you an example, if I was using this voltmeter here and I have a number of 0 0.17 volts, say, then my least significant digit would be this seven here. Okay, because it's going to be the smallest number on that screen. Uh, so your 0 0.01 that is going to be your least significant digit, okay? So that means that plus or minus one of that 0 0.01 will just be 0 0.01 volts, okay? So my reading uncertainty in that digital scale would be plus or minus 0 0.01 volts. If I had, say, 0 0.172, then my two would be my least significant digit. So my reading uncertainty in that case would be plus or minus 0 0.001 in that case, okay? So that's a bit on scale reading uncertainties for you. The only other thing to mention before we move on to mean and random uncertainty is that uncertainties can be expressed in something called absolute form. So what this means is we can write down our measurement, our number, plus or minus the uncertainty. So you're going to see uncertainties written next to the measurements like this an awful lot. Okay, so brackets are often used to contain the numbers with the unit appearing after. So here's an example. Let's say you take a, a ruler and you measure the length of a pen. So a standard 30 centimeter ruler. The pen is found to have a length of 13.50 centimeters, but the ruler has a scale reading of plus or minus 0.05 centimeters. In absolute form, this could be written as 13.50, so that's your measurement, plus or minus your uncertainty of 0.05 centimeters. Okay, so that's just an example. You'll see they're contained in the brackets with the unit appearing after. You don't need to have the unit after each number if they're in brackets. So this can help us um, and we'll often see uncertainties expressed like this an awful lot. So the only other thing to mention is that we always use a plus or minus sign in front of an uncertainty because it can either be um, the measurement plus 0 0.05, for example, or the measurement minus 0 0.05, either way on the scale. Moving on to mean and random uncertainty then. 
By this stage in your physics career, you will be used to repeating measurements when carrying out experiments in order to obtain a mean also known as an average. So we repeat measurements in order to take an average. We say that the mean of a set of repeated measurements is the best estimate of the true value of the quantity being measured. So as we said earlier, you're never quite going to get bang on the measurement that you want to get, but it's going to give you a really good estimate if you take the mean of it, okay? So we also say that it's normal for measurements taken to form a spread around the mean value, as shown in this picture here. So let's say we take 100 measurements, then some of those 100 measurements will be bang on our mean value, and that would be this part here in the middle. But the others will form a spread around that value, because chances are you're going to get a different result every time you take a measurement. Moving on then, how do we calculate mean? Well, you should be used to calculating mean by now, but to get the mean, we take the sum of all the measurements and divide by the total number of measurements. So that just means you add up all the numbers and you divide by how many numbers there are. So let's say you have a set of five results of measurements, then you would add up the five results and you divide by five in that case, because that is your total number of measurements. The random uncertainties, however, we say that when measurements are repeated, slight variations or random fluctuations in the readings will occur. And this leads to something called random uncertainties. So that is because chances are when you are repeating measurements, it's going to be slightly different each time and you're going to, that's going to give rise to random uncertainties, random results. So the more a measurement is repeated, however, the smaller the random uncertainty becomes. So that's a bit like in biology where if you repeat the experiment more and more, you're going to increase the reliability of it. So in the, our case, we're reducing the error in it. We're reducing the random uncertainty. So the random uncertainty is found using this equation here in the box. So the random uncertainty is equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by the total number of measurements. So let's say we go back to our example of five measurements. So I would choose the biggest number in those five measurements, then subtract the smallest number in those five measurements, and then divide by five because that is my total number of measurements. Okay. The last thing to point out for mean and random uncertainty is that you will often be asked to calculate the random uncertainty after finding the mean value of a set of readings. So they often ask you to find the mean first and then find the random uncertainty in the mean. Okay, and there's lots of examples and practice of that. Looking at systematic uncertainty now, you will all have been subject to systematic uncertainty before when you're taking measurements and you might not even have realized it. So just to give you an example, let's say um, you were to carry out an experiment where you're measuring distances with a meter stick. Let's say the meter stick wasn't quite 100 centimeters or one meter in length, but it was actually cut off at the end by a very small amount. So it could be micrometers or millimeters. That means that every time you take your measurements with your meter stick, there's no guarantee that you're going to be measuring from the zero point each time. So that means that your results could all be offset by several millimeters or micrometers each time. And it's going to affect all your results in the same way. So we say that systematic uncertainties occur when all measurements are affected in the same way. For example, the readings are all too high or they're all too low. This could be due to a faulty measuring instrument, the poor design of an instrument, failure to zero a measuring instrument before taking readings, or the experimenter making the same mistake each time when taking a reading. So another example that springs to mind is uh, a balance scale that you might stand on to measure your mass in kilograms. They have a little calibration um, wheel or button on, uh, on weighing scales or balance scales usually. So if you've not calibrated it to zero before you stand on the balance scale, then you're going to be measuring your mass to be higher than what it actually is or lower than what it actually is. As an example, let's say you were to carry out an experiment on Ohm's law and then you plotted the results of voltage against current. Now, we all know what you should get, which should be a, a directly proportional relationship. So from National 5 Physics, you saw that when you plot voltage against current, you get a straight line through the origin. And that tells us that voltage is directly proportional to current. But let's say there was a systematic uncertainty in your voltmeter readings, and let's say they were all too high. Then your graph would look like this instead. It would start offset from the origin, okay? And the reason for that is that all your voltmeter readings are now too high. So that means that this line, this relationship is going to be offset from where it should be. So all our voltmeter readings are too high. And that means that all our voltmeter readings have been affected in the same way, which is a systematic uncertainty. 
If the current values were all too high, and let's say the voltmeter readings were fine, then our line would actually be up here instead of over this side. So our line would be this side. And the last thing to mention, guys, is that when systematic uncertainties are present, the mean value of a set of readings will be offset. So that's kind of what that graph is showing you there, that your, your results are offset from where they should be. That's it from me, guys. I hope this has been useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.